In March 2020, I witnessed the launch of the COVID-19 fraud. The official narratives flooded the corporate news and social media platforms, while the permitted talking points were dictated to the public. What disturbed me the most was seeing the fear-based propaganda take hold and the devastating effect it had on our communities. I made the decision to speak out, and since then my publications have been aimed at reducing fear while dealing with the material. Unfortunately, others who counter the mainstream narratives then introduce alternative fear-based plots that create as much anxiety as the original story. That's why we decided to address the issue of ear vaxxers, supposedly a new technology where populations can be inoculated with aerosolized vaccines without their knowledge or consent. In this video, we'll examine what an ear vax can do, what it can't do, and most importantly, where to focus your attention if your goal is true health. You're looking at the technology that was used by those planes. The patent stated that the spray nozzles could be used to spray vaccines biologics, we discovered that there was development of technology for self-spreading vaccines. This to me sounds like a conspiracy now, uh, but lo and behold, it's not. The next step for them is human trials. You've just been watching US attorney Catherine Ibarra being interviewed by Dan Aston Gregory. While I certainly won't criticize their investigations into aerial spraying programs, the issue of airdropped vaccines needs to be carefully dissected. Firstly, patents do not necessarily equate to biological reality. Additionally, if you watch the whole interview, you will appreciate that the fear of dispersed and transmissible vaccines comes back to the misplaced fear of imagined viruses and contagion. It is reminiscent of the shedding scare a few years ago. That was based on the idea that COVID vaccine recipients were producing infectious proteins, possibly a spike protein, that was then transmitting to unvaccinated people to make them ill. We have previously addressed this issue and how it is an offshoot of the germ theory paradigm, in this case related to the prion hypothesis that remains entirely unestablished, as we have covered in publications such as Virusmania. For an overview of some of these concepts, you can also watch my video, The Truth About Contagion. The stories about airdropped vaccines have actually been circulating for a few years. In October 2023, one such article appeared on the Children's Health Defence website titled, Yale Researchers Develop Airborne mRNA Vaccines by Joseph McCullough. In typical Dr. McCullough fashion, the story pushes the fear factor and claims that, Yale University researchers have developed an airborne method for delivering mRNA right to your lungs. An airborne mRNA product could be used to rapidly vaccinate the masses without their knowledge or consent. And the US government also has a history of covert bioweapon experiments. On this last point, we have spent years examining so-called bioweapons and can categorically say that there is no evidence for their claimed capabilities. Please check out all our videos and essays on this topic. Suffice to say here, it is often people who buy into the bioweapons gaslight who also get excited about transmissible vaccines. So as always, we need to examine the source material from which these claims are being derived. The paper in question is titled, Polymer Nanoparticles Deliver mRNA to the Lung for Mucosal Vaccination, and it appeared in the journal Science Translational Medicine. Whenever you are looking at a, quote, scientific journal, it is a good idea to check if there are any conflicts of interest. There were a few of those in the footnotes, but the sordid nature of these journals goes upstream from this. The owner of this publication is the American Association for the Advancement of Science, an agency that also owns the journal Science. If we check the 2024 AAAS annual report, we can see that this organization has a massive funding base. With over 20 US government agencies passing on money taken from taxpayers. Then they have their corporate donors, including Amgen. 
the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, J.P. Morgan Chase, Lilly Endowment, the Merck Company Foundation, and Microsoft. You get the picture, but it gets even worse. The Triple AES describe themselves as, quote, defenders of scientific freedom. They even have an annual award in this category, and we'll now take a look at one of their recently celebrated winners. The AAAS Award for Scientific Freedom and Responsibility honors scientists and engineers whose exemplary actions, sometimes taken at significant personal cost, have served to foster and protect those ideals. This year, we honor Peter Hotez for his unwavering advocacy for vaccines, his efforts to develop new vaccines for global health and provide access to vaccinations, and his work to address rising anti-vaccine activism and misinformation. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, Hotez has devoted himself to combating both the virus and misinformation about it. He co-led international collaborative efforts to develop a low-cost, no-patent coronavirus vaccine technology that was transferred to vaccine producers in India and Indonesia, where those vaccines were authorized for emergency use and administered to almost 100 million children and adults. He regularly engages in dialogue with groups with historically low vaccination rates to share accurate information about the COVID-19 vaccines and other potential life-saving immunizations. For these efforts, Hotez and his colleague Maria Elena Batazzi were nominated for the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize. He is a leading national voice combating rising organized, well-financed, and often politically motivated anti-science aggression. Peter Hotez, recipient of the 2023 AAAS Award for Scientific Freedom and Responsibility. I'm not as cautious about my diet as I should be. I'm a junk foodaholic. Just as well, we have Dr. Hotez, who has the backing of Big Pharma and the globalist media defending our scientific freedoms. Meanwhile, the New Zealand medical, quote, authorities are trying to extort $160,000 from me for exposing the COVID-19 fraud. I wonder whether the AAAS will nominate me for the next award for scientific freedom. Not bloody likely. <laughs> Fantasies aside, let's come back to the paper that alarmed Dr. McCola. Polymer nanoparticles deliver mRNA to the lung for mucosal vaccination. I'm sure many people would find this paper yawn-inducing, with statements such as We capitalized on the highly tunable nature of PACE polyplexes by screening a library of delivery vehicles with different chemical end groups and PEG content to optimize for high protein expression after local delivery to the respiratory tract. In other words, they want a system to smuggle RNA into the lungs with the hope that it results in the production of a particular protein. However, there is no need to get bogged down in the biochemistry and the subsequent reactions from the test mice. Remember how Dr. McCullough said they have, quote, developed an airborne method for delivering mRNA right to your lungs? Well, that's quite an exaggeration. When we consult the method section of this paper, there is no mention of aerosolizing anything. The mice were inoculated by direct injections into either their nasal cavities or even their tracheas. Unless you are foolish enough to allow someone to perform a similarly invasive procedure on you, there is no risk of being inoculated this way. In a similar example, imagine you are in the same room as someone who is using a medicated inhaler that contains, for example, a corticosteroid. Sure, you may breathe in a few molecules, but that's not going to do anything significant compared to the million-fold higher dose that they are receiving. Now think of what would happen if something was sprayed by an aircraft several hundred feet or more above the ground. By the time it gets to you, it's in a very diluted amount. We have covered a related issue before in the video When You Wish Upon a Bioweapon. Dropping already dubious biologics from the air is a waste of time when synthetic chemicals are far easier to use and are known to cause significant effects. Before we move on from the science translational medicine paper, I should point out the seemingly remarkable results in figure 5k. The claim is that all naive mice exposed to SARS-CoV-2 died, but in the lung inoculated vaccine group, 70% survived. What actually took place is hard to know, but we can tell you one thing for sure. The cited HCOV-19 USA WA1 2020 is not a virus. 
This is the same specimen used by Harcourt et al. in the CDC's flagship COVID publication from June 2020. If you want to see the dissection of this paper, including the embarrassing Freedom of Information disclosures, please read A Farewell to Virology. Moving on from animal studies, the first trial of inhaled mRNA in human subjects was published in 2023, entitled Inhaled mRNA Therapy for Treatment of Cystic Fibrosis. Notably, recruitment of the participants predated the COVID-19 era and started in May 2018. The study was sponsored by Translate Bio, a biotech company that was purchased by Sanofi in 2021 for around $3.2 billion. The two companies had already been working together on a COVID-19 vaccine that failed to make it to the market. With regard to the buyout, the press release informed us that Translate Bio is a clinical stage mRNA therapeutics company developing a new class of potentially transformative medicines to treat diseases caused by protein or gene dysfunction or to prevent infectious diseases by generating protective immunity. And Sanofi is dedicated to supporting people through their health challenges. We are a global biopharmaceutical company focused on human health. We prevent illnesses with vaccines, provide innovative treatments to fight pain and ease suffering. Sanofi's quote, dedication, has certainly paid dividends, and their 2024 revenue was listed as 41.1 billion euros. We ended 2024 strong with double digit sales growth driven by the ongoing success of our pharma and vaccine launches. That includes our all infant RSV protection, achieving blockbuster status in Q4 with more than 6 million babies protected across 20 countries. Profits, protection and blockbusters. Trust him. He's getting paid around 11 million euros a year to bring you such news. Back to the cystic fibrosis study and the product being tested was MRT5005, described as mRNA delivered by aerosol in lipid nanoparticles. We can see that the results of this inhaled mRNA quote therapy were quite underwhelming. In fact, no beneficial effects were observed in the trial participants. The authors described it as safe and well tolerated, although it is evident that half of the recipients developed a cough, half developed a headache, and nearly a third developed a fever. It was noted that higher doses resulted in increased frequency of febrile reactions, and these could persist for a couple of days. Additionally, breathing was worsened for a third of recipients. So the description, well tolerated, would appear rather generous. The paper stated, It is not clear whether the mRNA or the lipid component is responsible for these febrile reactions. Well, it doesn't matter whether you want to blame it on one of them or both. The body has just let you know that it was not happy about what was inhaled and has gone into an eliminatory response. The authors suggested that the reaction to this pharmaceutical could be combated by giving another pharmaceutical in the form of an anti-inflammatory drug. This is reminiscent of a Dr. Robert Mendelssohn quote, An obstetrician is like a fireman. They both rush in and save lives. The only difference is, the fireman didn't start the fire. It also reminds me of an incident around 2021, when my husband Mark was contacted by a family whose teenager had suffered a mini stroke following his first COVID shot. Mark of course advised them that nobody should take the shot and their son was at a grave risk of a further brain injury. However, the quote expert doctor in the hospital advised that the boy should proceed to a second COVID shot while they simultaneously injected a blood thinning agent. This is why we call modern medicine the killing fields. Please watch my video with that very title if you have not seen it before. Another point of note in the human cystic fibrosis trial was that the particles were delivered to the lungs by nebulization times of up to two hours. Once again, unless you are consenting to this kind of activity, it is not something that is going to affect you. Watch out though, they may try to entice you with McMaster University's inhaled COVID vaccine. So we're using a jet nebulizer that um, produces a very, very fine mist. The particles are so tiny that they go right down into the lung. By the way, that one is called Aerovax and is apparently now being tested in phase two clinical trials. Participation is invited for all those who still think COVID was real and vaccine good. 
Coming back to the Dr. McCola article, he states that an airborne vaccine makes it possible to rapidly disseminate it across a population. By releasing the vaccine in the air, there's no need to inject each person individually, which is not only time-consuming, but difficult if an individual objects to the shot. In contrast, we can see from the current technology that nothing like this exists, and we are not going to be involuntarily vaccinated by inhalation. The old-fashioned individual injection remains the usual way that most people or animals are vaccinated. I would conclude that the scares surrounding alleged ear vaccines are another distraction. While people are thinking about potential inhalation of these products or perhaps some imagined bioweapon, they fail to identify what really makes them ill. Added to that, the unnecessary fear will likely lead to negative health effects and even reduce quality of life. It is certainly not helpful to be scared of going outside. I would definitely be more concerned about all of the other forms of poisoning we are choosing to be exposed to, rather than the RNA boogeyman. As always, pay attention to your food and water sources, the quality of the air you breathe and the home you live in. For more information on how we achieve true health, please check out all the free resources at drsambailey.com, including the video, The Real Reasons Why You Get Sick. Mark and I also dig into many of these topics in our fortnightly Q&A sessions. And don't forget the book Terrain Therapy, which covers all aspects of right thinking and right living. If you enjoyed this video, please visit supportdrsam.com 